After two consecutive scoreless games in our last two episodes, we knew that we would do some goals here in the realistic takeover rebuild with Everton. And that's exactly what we got when we travelled down to Portman Road to face Ipswich Town. The December weather was in full effect, the cold, hard, frosty field covered with a light dusting of snow, but it didn't take long for things to heat up. Abdullah Decore skipping away from his man and firing a shot at goal that the goalkeeper was equal to. And it was only 10 minutes later that Beto broke the deadlock, wrestling the ball away from the Ipswich centre-back Edmondson, bearing down on goal and then showing great composure to slot the ball past the Ipswich goalkeeper to make it 1-0. Ipswich responded almost immediately though, working the ball into our penalty area and slotting the ball past the helpless Jordan Pickford to make it one all. And in a half filled with defensive errors, it was another mistake that gifted us a second lead 35 minutes into the game. Jack Harrison this time finding the back of the net. But we couldn't help but make defensive mistakes of our own, gifting Ipswich a second goal in a frantic first half. Yet we still somehow had not seen the last of the goals nor the mistakes. Beto heading home from a Reese Nelson cross that the goalkeeper should have done a much better job of dealing with. And whilst we continue to score after the break, Ipswich failed to keep up, which allowed us to pull away from the Jack Harrison this time, stealing the ball away from the Ipswich defence and slotting home to make it 4-2. But it was the big man up top, Beto, that put the ice in on the cake two minutes from time, picking up the ball from Dwight McNeil on the left-hand side, cutting it onto his right inside the Ipswich box and firing home for what would probably be his best finish of the game and for what I'm certain is our first hat-trick of the series. So a big performance away from home secures a 5-2 victory, something of a relief after the last two goalless episodes. But there was bad news as well as good waiting for us after the game. Jared Branthwaite was forced off mid-match and the physicians let us know after the game that he has broken his toe and he will be out of the side for three months. So we will be without our young centre-back for the featured game of the episode versus Tottenham Hotspur at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Ben Godfrey comes into the back five to replace him. Philip Mawene comes into the side in place of Nathan Patterson, but it's our strongest 11 and the one that we saw in the last game outside of those two changes. As for Tottenham, they have a couple of interesting new faces in their starting 11. Luis Alberto finds a place in midfield after his 45 million switch. There's also a place in the starting lineup for Edmund Tapsabar and a place on the bench for Angel Correa, each joining Tottenham for a fee in the region of 35 million. And it's a strong front three leading the attack for Tottenham today. Hume Min Son, Richarlison, and Kulisevsky up front. So without further ado, let's head down to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and see if we can get our first real result against a top six club this year. We are down in London for our featured game of the episode. A trip to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. One of the better looking stadiums in the country, I would say. I really love the huge single tier stand at one end of the stadium behind one of the goals. I think it looks so good. And it must be so fun to watch football from there. But we've got to be focused on the game rather than on the stadium. Three points already in the episode after a fantastic performance away at Ipswich Town. Highest scoring game of the episode so far and the most goals that we've scored in any game so far this episode as well. Jack Harrison, the man caught offside, scoring two goals. Beto, of course, with a hat-trick. Both start today. Decore continues in midfield as well. Tempted to put James Garner back into the side just for that added defensive security in the centre of midfield alongside Onana. But Graham Potter ends up going with Abdoulaye Decore, a bit more of an attacking threat. So potentially looking to get out on the front foot against Spurs a little more often. I'm anticipating that Spurs will press high. They'll play with a high line. They will commit bodies forward. And I'm hoping there are going to be plenty of gaps in behind for quick counter-attacks. It's not really what we're set up to do in terms of 
a default game plan. But it is certainly something that we can manufacture during the game, especially with the pace of players like Reese Nelson and to a slightly lesser extent Jack Harrison. We are going to have to defend first and foremost though, and that's exactly what Onana does there. Somehow Son manages to skip away from the challenge regardless. And he's done so again here. Good challenge from Dekaipa this time though. Amadojic playing on the left side of the three today. Allowing Ben Godfrey to come in on that right side. And there's the pace of Reese Nelson. Of course, a former Arsenal player against his former rivals. And there is Ben Godfrey. Can't win the header against number 18. Is that Giovanni Lo Celso, maybe? I barely even remember what the lineup was, even though I looked at it only seconds ago. Here's Kulusevski. Onana for company. Well worked. Good save, Jordan Pickford. Richarlison in the area. And Ange Postacoglu looks so good on here now as well. Finally, he gets a face scan. His generated face looked awful. So bad before. So I'm glad to see he's finally got a face scan. And it's another shot and a good save again from Jordan Pickford. A bit more comfortable this time. His initial save from Richarlison was a much more impressive one. As a... Uh, not too sure what to make of this particular transfer. An unnamed bald player making the move from an unnamed club to Tottenham Hotspur apparently. Not sure how much weight to give that. Philip Mwene starting on the right hand side of the defence today as well. Mainz not best pleased with his lack of game time so far. And that might be a position that we're looking to address in January. A more permanent option in terms of a backup fullback. But about 15 minutes into the game. Bit of a quiet start here. Couple of saves from Jordan Pickford early. But Tottenham haven't caused us too many issues. We certainly haven't caused them any issues though. And here comes that high press. Just forcing the ball back to James Tarkovsky. Ben Godfrey steps up. But Richarlison there. Tarkovsky once more. Armadojic. Maxim de Kuyper in a bit of space now. A little bit of possession for Everton in these last couple of minutes or so where it's been all Tottenham Hotspur so far. And I don't mind just sitting with the ball at our feet really for as long as we can today. I think if we're going to come away with a result, either a victory or a draw, it's going to be because we've used the ball well and we've used our time on the ball well. And likely that we've spent a lot of time on the ball as well. If we just allow Tottenham to have possession. I anticipate they're going to punish us at some point. Maxim de Kuyper skips away from Emerson Royale. Better when the box wins the header. But it's a comfortable one for Vicario. A tame header in the end. And one that the Tottenham goalkeeper was more than equal to. Ben Godfrey doesn't win the header. And it is Giovanni Lo Celso, number 18. He's a player that I looked at in the summer. I thought potentially we could nab him on loan. Out of favour in Tottenham, really. Good challenge, Arma Dodjic. But Ange Postacoglu here in this particular save is choosing to play the Argentinian. So that loan offer was declined. Sessegnon, another player I believe we've got on our shortlist. But again, if he's getting game time for Tottenham, then I don't really see us being able to make a move for him at any point. Richarlison, James Tarkovsky for company. Philip Mwene in the box as well. Beto back doing his defensive duties, as is Jack Harrison. Beaten by Ryan Sessegnon outside, though. Philip Mwene... And Jack Harrison between them do enough to stop the cross. And James Tarkovsky cuts it out. when it does eventually find its way into the Tottenham box. And I'm not sure how we haven't had that pulled back for a free kick. That's a clear foul. The referee played advantage as far as I'm aware. There was no advantage, but he didn't pull it back for the free kick. Good challenge, I'm going to do Onana. And we'll just clear the ball away here because I think Jack Harrison could be in space. Tottenham are committing bodies forward. I had a quick look. 
on the little map at the bottom of the screen there and we were three on three with Tottenham defenders it was a poor ball from Jordan Pickford but we had players up and we were man for man against the Tottenham defenders there and I think that's something we're going to have to try on more than one occasion today the long balls out from Jordan Pickford in search of Jack Harrison and particularly in search good challenge of Rhys Nelson Jack Harrison just about manages to keep it in the Tottenham defenders backing off Hyung Min Son not willing to confront Jack Harrison and instead he just makes his way down the Tottenham left that's inside now could have a shot from range here Jack Harrison he does and it's blocked out for an Everton corner first signs of real danger here half an hour into the game for the away team I need to address the roles again because we have Reese Nelson on corner kicks and he's not one of our primary or even secondary set piece takers Maxime de Kuyper however is there's Beto in the box can't win the header Maxime de Kuyper collects his turn to strike from range it's on target and it's a really good save from Vicario to be fair great strike from Maxime de Kuyper our best chance of the game so far it was a, a vicious effort and it actually came through bodies there the goalkeeper unsighted for a time and did really well to react and to get down to that again we're going to, going to if it gives us the option which apparently it's not going to I wanted to switch to the Kuiper there but it's not letting me for some reason Beto again in the box again can't win it laid off for Jack Harrison but there's not enough on that and Kulusevski could come away with it Harrison does well just to delay the counter though and there's Saar inside to Lo Celso Luis Alberto one of the new Tottenham men into Richarlison and again we've done a good job just to delay in the Tottenham attack here and allowing our players who had committed themselves forward for the corner to get back in position Saar to Kulusevski Godfrey steps across now does well to win the ball can't prevent it from going out for a Tottenham corner though and here's that Maxim de Kuyper shot again oh and it almost took a nick off Sessignon unsighted the goalkeeper like we said and slightly wrong footed him almost for a moment and if it would have taken a nick off Sessignon I would have liked the chances of that going in unfortunately just squeezed past him allowing the goalkeeper to make the save Mwene and De Kuyper both on this left hand side strike from range this time from Tottenham Luis Alberto it was and Jordan Pickford like Vicario at the other end was equal to it and Pickford again like Vicario at the other end was slightly unsighted there and did well to get down and make the save looked relatively comfortable at first glance but looking closely at the replay it was a, a more difficult save than it initially seemed Mwene wins the ball Reese Nelson make a run there's so much space there why are you wandering back towards your own half he's onside with acres of space in behind Philip Mwene with the ball at his feet and Reese Nelson is wandering back towards him Maxim de Kuyper steals the ball away high up the pitch and I think that's Van der Ven making a last ditch challenge to prevent De Kuyper from entering the Tottenham box with the ball. Does end up conceding a corner. We'll see if we can get Maxim De Kuyper on this one and we can. Going to make a run across the near post and try and find is that Onana towards the back post there. It's not gone where we anticipated that it would. Vicario makes a hash of it. Onana lifts it back into the box but it takes a deflection off a Tottenham man and Vicario collects just takes the goal kick long and James Harkovsky's got that all wrong looks as though he was inhibited though as he tried to win the header there and he'll take the free kick to Ben Godfrey who lifts it in towards Beto a little bit too much on that it was a nice idea to take the free kick short and then just to loft it into the box in search of the big man up front. But a little bit too much on that from Godfrey. Nice little touch into Saar. 
Onana there. Kulisevsky. And Emerson Royale. Teaming up. On to Kuiper on this left-hand side. And Tottenham have worked it nicely into the box where Richarlison finds the ball at his feet and Saar eventually gets the shot off and it's another big save from Jordan Pickford. He's been excellent, consistent for us so far this season. And the Everton fans with their head in their hands already. It's not yet half-time. But it seems as if they think their team are clinging on for dear life. I wouldn't say it's been quite that tragic so far. This time, Reese Nelson does decide to make a run in behind. Ken Dekure find him. Vicario's going to come out for it. Takes it down outside of his area, but does manage to clear. Well won by Arma Djodjic. There's Beto. Let me fashion one last chance before the half is out. It's a foul on Beto, who stays down. I think he's okay, though. And it is a yellow card for Giovanni Lo Celso. Deservedly, I would say, booked for that challenge. And we will be able to fashion one last chance, at least from the free kick. De Kuyper lofts it up. De Kure can't quite win the header. And it was a chance to get another shot on goal before the half is out, but we didn't really take it there. Lovely little ball into the path of Emerson Royale. De Kuyper there. To close him down. Kulisevsky. Slightly deeper than his fullback. And Van der Ven almost gives the ball away. Saar. Loses out. And I think the referee's going to blow for half time here. And he does. So. We had two consecutive goalless draws in the last two episodes. In terms of featured games. And then. The episode today absolutely exploded into life. Plenty of goals. In our trip to Ipswich Town. But again here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is going to be goalless at half time so no changes for either side as we come out for the second half here at least not in terms of personnel it's the same 11 for us and the same 11 for Tottenham I think we're potentially going to come out with a bit more of an attacking impetus in this second half though there have been gaps in behind as Tottenham have committed players forward we anticipated that potentially there would be and it did play out that way in the first half. I think Tottenham, you would say, had the better of it. But there were gaps in behind on quick counter-attacks. And we just weren't quite able to exploit them. Because we weren't quite quickly enough on the front foot. Looking to make a change there in this second half. So we're going to step up into our attacking game plan where we get the chance. That's going to mean Maxim de Kuyper is slightly higher up the field in that left midfield position. Rather than the wing-back position as Jordan Pickford makes another good save. Really, really good from Giovanni Lo Celso. Curling shot with the left foot. That's an awful replay. Let's get out of that as quickly as we can. It looks like Human Son might be injured down here. Looks like he was holding his shoulder there as he took the short corner. Philip Mawene, I believe, fouled. Although Mawene seemed to be shrugging as if the free kick had been called against him. It wasn't. It was called against the Tottenham man. So we will step up into our attacking game plan here. Maxim to Kuiper higher up the field. And our game plan, our approach, just a bit more front-footed. A bit more, a bit more attacking impetus. A few more forward runs. A few more bodies committed. I think this game is there for the taking. As we said, Tottenham have had the better of it as we see our upcoming fixture against Manchester City. There will be highlights of that after this featured game. Tottenham have had the better of the game, but I think it is there for, for the winning. I think if we're brave, there's no reason we can't come away with all three points here. Onana. Just steps up into the space that Tottenham are affording him. Poor pass into Beto. That's really, really poor from Amadou Onana. He's been fairly anonymous so far today. And I would rather he remained anonymous than to do that. Just wandered up into the Tottenham half and then kicked the ball straight to them. A really poor pass. And Kulisevsky almost into the Everton box, but instead dealt with and lofted up towards Reese Nelson. The first chance really to use his pace today. 
Jack Harrison at the back post. Don't think he's going to get there. But he's going to force a clearance from Sessignon. Philip Mwene picks up the mantle. Jack Harrison is inside. Struck across the six-yard box and into the net from Rhys Nelson. And it's the former Arsenal man that opens the scoring. I said the game was there to be won. Rhys Nelson seemed to agree. And he's put Everton ahead here at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. It's a really good ball across the six-yard box from Jack Harrison. To find Rhys Nelson all alone at the back post. Completely unmarked. And the attack and approach to this second half has paid dividends. As almost an hour into the game, we do break the deadlock. And take the lead from Tottenham away from home. So we are going to drop immediately back into our balanced game plan. And probably even into our defensive game plan before too long. Now that we have got the lead, definitely just interested simply in defending it. I don't think we need to push for a second goal here. I'm just going to try and hold on to the first. I mean, even if we do concede, if we can just concede one... I would be happy enough with that. Obviously, I want to win the game now that we do have the lead. But if we can come away with a point, I would have taken that before the game. So even though we have the lead now, we do, I think, have to be happy if we do come away with a point. Good save, Jordan Pickford. I think Tottenham are really going to press the issue. And they have won another corner here. We're going to make a couple of changes and drop back into our defensive game plan already, I think, with half an hour to go in the game. So two changes for Graham Potter before Tottenham take the corner here. It's Jack Harrison and Abdoulaye Decore coming off. Dwight McNeil coming on to replace Harrison. And James Garner coming on in the centre of midfield. So we will drop into that flat midfield four that we like to drop into in that defensive game plan. Dwight McNeil sitting just in front of Maxim De Kuyper. We know how good Dwight McNeil is defensively and there he is already making a difference in that regard. James Garner simply clearing. So Dwight McNeil's defensive utility we're really going to rely on for the remaining half an hour of this game. It's Reese Nelson here though with the ball at his feet. Emerson Royale puts in a good challenge to prevent him from breaking away on that left-hand side. There's De Kuyper, Tarkovsky, Ben Godfrey. There's Mouwene. And again, the more that we keep the ball, the closer that we come to winning this game. So we don't need to press the issue too much. We don't need to be playing risky passes in dangerous areas high up the field. We can just play the ball around the back and force Tottenham to step to us. Which they are not really taking the opportunity to do here. Maxim de Kuyper. Big challenge, but just sends the ball into Jordan Pickford's feet and he'll just release to Ben Godfrey. There's Moene on the right-hand side. King Min Son looks like he's run off that injury that he seemed to have picked up earlier on. And it is going to be Los Celso to come off here for another new Tottenham player, Angel Correa. Lo Celso, of course, picked up the booking earlier on, so... Potentially a bit of a conservative move from Postacoglu in that sense. But Correa, of course, a very attacking player. So not sacrificing anything in terms of creativity going forward. Good challenge, Mawene. We just need to get rid here, which we don't manage to do with Godfrey. But we do manage to do with Tarkovsky. And Beto just releases to Onana, who can drive forward here at Tottenham. Maxim de Kuyper also has picked up a knock at the moment. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Dwight McNeil with a good run forward. Van der Ven comes across to deal with it. Dwight McNeil puts him under pressure, but not quite enough to force a mistake. James Garner tracking back and putting in an excellent challenge. Onana failing to do anything with it, though. Onana's been really poor today. I don't really want an intervention by Tarkovsky. It looked like Tottenham had picked us apart there. Until Tarkovsky stuck out a leg to intervene there. And Jordan Pickford has found Reese Nelson. Strikes towards goal and parried away by Vicario. 
it was a chance for Tottenham at one end and what felt like a second later Reese Nelson was in the Tottenham Hotspur box at the other end of the field with a chance to make it 2-0 big save from Vicario and what's this that can't be a foul against Beto he's just using his body there to hold off the Tottenham defender Another change for Tottenham. I think it's going to be a couple more changes for Graham Potter here as well. So two more changes here for Graham Potter and Everton. Amadou Onana coming off for Noah and Bamba. And De Kuyper has been forced off the field with that injury. So Nathan Patterson to come on to replace him. And Philip Mwene will take his place on the left-hand side of that back five rather than the right. White McNeil just searching for Mwene. Kulisevsky back to deal with it though 15 minutes left to go in the game we still have that one goal lead to hang on to Hoybeag the new man on for Tottenham Luis Alberto there's Sessignon Kingman Son up ahead of him can't find him though although it looks like a Tottenham Rowan I thought that had just been put out of play by Sessignon but apparently it took a deflection off Reese Nelson Tottenham inside with Hoybeag once more Emerson Royale White McNeil goes to meet him. Forces him towards the sideline. Good challenge, Arma Dodgic. Up towards Beto. Beto can't quite hold off the Tottenham defender for long enough to bring that ball under control. Beto really doing his best to give Graham Potter a difficult decision to make. He's almost certainly not going to be moved in January, Beto. But it looked for all the world that Beto was going to be gone from Everton next summer but with the form he's been in so far this season Richarlison into the box bit of ping pong bit of pinball in the box there and it does eventually go out for a Tottenham corner Richarlison off Timo Werner on it's going to be the last change Tottenham can make with the form Beto's been in so far this season, it would seem crazy for Graham Potter to sell him. King Min Son is still nursing that injury. I'm surprised he hasn't been taken off. Unless it's a second injury that he's picked up after having run off the first. There is Werner. Good intervention again by Armadodjic, and he just does well to clear. Right into that group of Everton fans in the corner of the ground. About 10 minutes to go, including injury time. Kulisevsky into the box now. Strikes towards goal and it flashes across the face of goal this time. Kulisevsky failing to get it on target. I would hope Jordan Pickford would have been equal to that. He was well positioned to make the stop. But I thought I was going to see that ball nestling into the far corner for a moment there. James Garner with the ball at his feet. Reese Nelson making a run in behind but that's just taking Tottenham defenders away from James Garner. There's Nathan Patterson. He's not even going to get there. Come on, Nathan. Wake up, lad. Come on. We've got a game to win here. It's just dithering. Luis Alberto. Hoiberg for Tottenham. Van der Ven. Cross to Emerson Royale. We've got one last change to make, and I think we'll make it next time the ball goes out of play. Good tackle, James Garner. Dwight McNeil. Makes a run in behind. He's released it too early. Garner should have held on to it a bit longer there. White McNeil would do his best. To minimise the effect of that mistake. But James Garner should have held on to it. Wasn't forced to play that pass quite so quickly. And it's just inviting pressure from Tottenham once more. Beto pressing high up the field though. His work rate has been good this season as well. He must, you would imagine feel like his time at Everton was short with the new regime and the new system so he's working as hard as he possibly can to keep his place as we've said in this series before it is a bit of an awkward fit in Graham Potter's new system but Beto is making it work and we could be able to run out the last couple of minutes here because we have the ball at our feet there are four minutes of injury time and we are already into the second or almost into the second Philip Mwene just runs 
into the corner. Emerson Royale on his last legs, but still just about managing to keep up with Mouene. There's Dwight McNeil. Into the Tottenham penalty area. Can he lay it off for Mouene? He can. Strikes towards goal. Beto with the ball at his feet. McNeil. Reese Nelson doubles the lead. And it is going to be an Everton win. Two goals from the former Arsenal man, Reese Nelson. Secures the victory at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium for Everton. And this, you would have to say, despite the massive scoreline in the first game of this episode, has to be our best result so far in the series. To go to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and come away, not just with all three points, but with a clean sheet as well, is really, really impressive. And we have ridden our luck at times a little bit. Jordan Pickford has been forced to make a couple of really good saves. But we've been clinical with the few chances that we've had. And we've defended very, very well to minimise the chances that Tottenham have had. Philip Mwene clears. There goes the final whistle. And it is going to be what I would say is a statement victory here. About halfway through Graham Potter's first season at Everton. It's taken a little while for us to find our feet. It took a few episodes, several episodes, I would say, to really get a feel for the new system, to really allow the new players to bed in. But that's certainly been happening over the last couple of episodes, and I think the proof is in the pudding in this one. Really, really good 2-0 win away at Tottenham Hotspur. So another fantastic start that takes us all the way up to ninth place, our highest position of the season so far. But again, bad news after a good result. Maxim de Kuyper, this time the player that we will be without for a number of months. So we are starting to look dangerously thin across the back five now. And that's certainly not what we need as we head into our third game of the episode and our toughest test of the series so far as we take on Manchester City at the Etihad. Not sure how much difference the absence of Branthwaite and De Kuyper will make as whatever our lineup, Man City should really dominate us. But we did get off to a positive start. Abdoulaye Decore picking up the ball in the centre circle, ploughing forward into the Manchester City half and striking a vicious effort at goal from range. But from there, it was all Manchester City. Phil Foden opening the scoring in the 11th minute and Erling Haaland making it to just three minutes later. It was exactly the same story either side of half time as well. Phil Foden getting his second goal just before the break and Erling Haaland making it 4-0 just after. But Man City did have one more goal left in them before we were finally put out of our misery by the sound of the referee's final whistle. And although the misery on the pitch may be over, misery off the pitch continues for Graham Potter, now losing Nathan Patterson to a five-day injury, which means even more rotation in that back five ahead of the fourth and final game of the episode, Philip Mwene and Ben Godfrey keep their places alongside Tarkovsky and Arma Dodjic, but it's Dwight McNeil who has to come in and fill that left wing back role. And in what was the most tightly contested fixture of the episode, it took 18 minutes before somebody finally had a sight of goal. James Garner taken on the shot from range. And it was Jack Harrison's turn to try and break the deadlock 20 minutes later. A big sweeping ball across the field from Reese Nelson finds the ex Leeds man, but his shot across the goalkeeper ends up going straight at him. And it would be Jack Harrison too that would find himself the next victim of the injury bug that is currently plaguing Everton Football Club. He went to ground just before half-time, was unable to get up and had to be removed from the field of play via stretcher. Then it was Wolves who came out brighter for the second half, Jordan Pickford doing well to parry away a Matthias Cunha effort. And it was Wolves who came closest to scoring Belgardi, unleashing a strike at goal from just inside the Everton box, but it cracked back against the post. Ultimately though, neither team were able to break the deadlock and after scoring 14 goals in the first three games of the episode, the final game is just another board draw. The injury crisis at Goodison Park does deepen though, Graham Potter having already lost Maxim de Kuyper and Jared Branthwaite for three months each, now loses Jack Harrison for seven months to a torn ACL. Thankfully, the January transfer window is now open so Graham Potter will have the chance to add some depth to his squad to cover for those injuries. So we'll get into those arrivals as well as a couple of departures in the next episode alongside our three games for the episode as well as we take on Blackpool in our first FA Cup fixture of the series. We have a fixture against Aston Villa at home and we travel down to Craven Cottage to take on Fulham.
So I look forward to that in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Take it easy.